want to pay attention, especially in this hour. My guest today is a pediatrician, and she is going to educate us on some health and behavioral topics that will help us parent better and help our kids do well in school. Joining me in the studio this morning is Dr. Stephanie Schultz, founder of Schultz Pediatrics, a Summit Medical Group provider. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great this morning. Well, it's a, it's a beautiful morning out there, isn't it? Definitely. So, returning to school, I, I you know, it's always a... Well, I don't know. It's it's just a weird time. Like my kids, they're very excited to go back to school, but that excitement, that energy, and then there's the nerves and all of those things. I mean, it it can be stressful for us parents, you know, uh, helping to prepare our kids, I guess, mentally. Um, what well, you got any great tips for that? I think that. The biggest thing is they're going to feed off of you. And so if you feel positive and give them that feeling of confidence, then they're going to feel that as Mm. well. And so I think sometimes, you know, we get a little bit nervous about the schedule changing and everything kind of ramping up. And so I think just kind of passing that forward to your kids, just that calm and saying that it's going to all be okay and we'll get back into the schedule and maybe trying a few days before school starts to Mm. get things back in in the swing helps a lot too yeah it's uh it, I, I know we have a ritual that the week before school basically everything reverts back to school time practices at bedtime uh you, you know my kids enjoy not always sleeping in their bed so they may sleep in the bonus room or whatever and so we we get them back in that routine making sure that they're prepared as best that they can be for that first day that comes about um you know, I, I know, like my kids, I mean, they're excited. They're excited. Everybody's like, you know, I ask a lot of other kids, I'm like, you, you excited to go back to school? It's like, nah. And my kids are like, yeah, I'm ready to go. You know, so it's exciting. I think for, like for us and in our family, it just, it helps break through some of the craziness that we deal with in summer, you know, because we're back to the routine. And, and that's kind of peaceful in a way. And uh, so I'm sure you probably have that conversation with a lot of your clients about having that routine and, and that stability for these, for our children as they get going back to school. Uh, I know how important it is in our house for sure. So what are, what are some things that we should be mindful of with our kids as we get back in school? Cause now we're, well, we're back in the Petri dish, right? Yes, uh, definitely more uh, illness uh, will start to pop up you know, during the summer. We don't see as many uh, illnesses. And so once school comes back into session, they're around their friends and definitely lots of uh, germs to, to share. Um, and so just, you know, just good hand washing. And, uh, you know, most kids are going to get six to eight uh, illnesses during the course of, of the school year. And so that, you know, that's just something to expect and definitely uh, getting to bed on time, making sure that uh, they get plenty of rest, that they get uh, the right amount of nutrition and then watching for those um, times when maybe they, you know, do need some downtime just to Mm kind of get used to the schedule and knowing that you may need to um, take it easy a little bit the first few weeks. Yeah. I I thank you for that reminder because, you know, we, we get in, at my house, I'm like, you know, uh, okay, so what? You had school today. Come on, let's go. We still got chores to do, you know, and, and I'm grateful. I, my my wife is amazing to help communicate to me and to our family a lot of times that, you know what? It's exhausting. School is exhausting. I mean, think about even as an adult, even now, if you have to go to a training seminar and you're you're just brain thinking all day. That's all you're doing. You're just using your brain all day. Usually when you're done, you're exhausted. And that's the way our kids are. Our kids are exhausted. They go from, well, you know, Roblox to Minecrafts or whatever games that they're playing or sports that they're doing and activities that they're doing and and being physically active, hopefully more so in the summertime. And, And then it's back to the think tank, right? It's back to just really working hard and uh i know we we joke when i have those days at work 
that there are just those mental taxing days. I'm more tired then than if I'm out in the field pulling wires somewhere and physically, you know, really taxing my body. So thank you for pointing that out. That's, that is hugely important. Um, your kids get home this first week. Just remember that. Remember that, you know what, this is, this is a lot. It's a lot for them. They're, they're being placed in usually rooms with, yeah, kids that they know, but there's going to be new kids, new faces, new personalities to adjust to. It's always that learning environment. How do we fit in in that space that we're at? Um, and so it, uh, you know, just like us, our kids need a little break. They need some decompression time as well. So, um, so one of the things, obviously, when we talk about it, is getting sicknesses. And I know it's something we struggle with a lot in our house, being a dad of a couple of beautiful little girls. And that is, okay, is it allergies? Is it a cold? When do I need to take them to the doctor? You know, what? help us out. Because I know the school system doesn't help us. They're like, you know, don't send your kid to school if they're sick. But then they're like, well, now you, they can only miss 10 days. And, and, and it, it makes it messy. Yeah, for sure. Kids in school can tell you what's going on. So that's that's something that you need to do is listen to your kids. If something like an ear is hurting or their throat is really sore or they just tell you they just feel really, really bad, I think, you know, just pay attention to that. And don't you don't necessarily have to come to the doctor every time they get sick, uh, even if they have a fever. If, if you can treat the fever mm-hmm. and they feel better and they get over it within a couple of days, then, you know, if they're not complaining that their ear hurts or uh, it hurts to cough or um, you, you find that they aren't drinking very well, you know, those are definitely reasons to uh, come into the doctor and make sure that it's not some sort of secondary bacterial infection. But you're, you know, run the mill cold or stomach flu, that sort of thing. You can just treat symptomatically at home and uh, keep them comfortable. And if they get better within two to three days, then generally you don't need a visit to the doctor. But certainly you could always call. I mean, we have parents who call all the time and ask, mm. is this something we need to come in for? And the nurses will uh, kind of give them this or that thing to try at home and then uh, come in if it doesn't get any better. Well, I, f- I feel relieved. I feel like I'm doing a little better than maybe I would have thought originally. Yeah. Uh, well, we are up to our first break. Listen, if you've got questions uh, for Dr. Schultz, give us a call. Give us a text. We'd love to hear from you this morning. 865 656 eight two five five that's eight six five six five six eight two five five we're going to take a short break we will be right back here on around the house with scott brokamp on news talk 98 7 w o k i welcome back to around the house with scott brokamp i am speaking this morning with dr stephanie schultz of schultz pediatrics and well you know what i I'm so glad that you're here with us this morning, Stephanie, being a dad of a couple of young girls, um, as I was sharing with you earlier before, before we got started that, you know, we, we just love our pediatrician, the girls, we just, she's been such a instrumental, instrumental part really in the upbringing of our kids. And I mean, of course we see our pediatrician regularly, uh, anytime we need anything, that's where we go. Whether it's immunizations, whether it's sports physicals, whatever, whatever ailment, whatever's going on with our kids, we always start with our pediatrician. And um, so I'm just, I'm glad that you're here because I think there's a lot of things that maybe parents don't utilize their pediatricians for. Um, I'm sure you see a lot of different things in kids, but so what would you say to a parent listening who maybe it's a first child, maybe they're, you know, they have a pediatrician, but they don't, they just use them sparingly. W- what do you feel like being a pediatrician? Where do you feel like you really fit in that role of a family in, in the health of those children? Well, I think we can be instrumental in just the overall health of your kids. Uh, we, certainly see kids yearly as they get into the school age just to make sure that they're um, able to um, 
learn appropriately, that they're growing appropriately, any immunizations that they may be due for. We kind of keep track of all those things as they come in, checking um, certain nutritional labs on occasion if there's trouble with, um, you know, developmental issues or health, mental health issues. We can certainly help with all those things. Oh, yeah. I think, um, you know, it, as I've done this for the length of time that I've done it, it's really nice to be a part of families' lives and watch those kids grow up and kind of help them through different things that may pop up uh, over time. And I think going to the doctor regularly makes it uh, easier for our job to to catch things because if you only see a child uh, every two or three years, it's really hard to know um, how they're doing. And uh, so, you know, just those regular physicals, I think, are very important because sometimes you may not even think there's a problem uh, and we may find one as we go through our, our physical and the different parts of that. So it's, I think it's just really important for that regular care. Yeah. I, I mean, it is in, in just the, the relationship of, like I said, with, with our pediatrician, you know, whenever really when anything's kind of been troubling our kids, whether it's been physical, whether it's been emotional, you know, we have gone to her for help and, and because we have built that relationship with her, when when the kids go in, she's having conversations with the kids about things because she's able to derive, hey, how are they doing? How how's their how are they doing mentally? How are they doing emotionally? Um, and and it just like you said, you can't if you're only seeing a kid every couple of years or so, you're not going to be able to pick up really on any of those types of of um, cues that maybe there's something else going on here and there so uh, I, again I, I just I know how instrumental our pediatrician is for our kids um, and it's you know mate uh, we just she's made a made a part of our family you know we just she just is um, and, and and of course is very resourceful and in in your staff as well as we were talking and we'll get into a little bit here uh, you have a nutritionist on staff. Yes, we do. I felt like a few years ago that we were getting lots of questions about diet, and then we have lots of kids with food allergies or eating disorders, things like that, that I felt like we needed a little more help in the office. And so we do have somebody, Mandy Welch, who comes in uh, two days a week and helps us with those things. And so it's, it's been a really big help because nutrition plays such a big part in our health that we didn't want that piece to not be taken care of. Mm. Yeah, that, I mean, it's vital. So, uh, and I, I kind of dive down some rabbit holes every once in a while. So in, in your professional opinion, you know, we hear of a lot more things now with um, gluten allergies and so many more food allergies now than, than I've ever heard of. Um, and, and we see more and more stuff that, goes back to diet or restrictions of diet do, is there do you see a reason for this is it just that we've been able to learn more and enjoy through science to help pinpoint some of these things that maybe kids have suffered with forever or is it the way things are being made or what you what is your opinion on some of that well i think certainly we do look for that more and we do have better testing and we can check um you know you know skin testing blood testing for certain allergens and so i think you know before maybe a child who had a lot of trouble with mm. uh, certain things eczema or stomach pain and that sort of thing we may not have been able to test as as easily for that uh, for those food allergies and so i think that for one definitely mm. um but we also you know, we're starting to introduce those allergen foods earlier uh, in life and realizing uh -huh. that, you know, we need to expose the kids at an earlier age so that they don't develop those, um, you know, negative antibodies to those particular uh, things. And so I think that is seeming to help at this point. I feel like that uh, it kind of the pendulum has swung back the other way a little bit more th as far as uh, food allergies go. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, you know, it's kind of like my business, the, the beauty of, of knowledge and research, the things that we can learn and, and better 
ourselves and in our generations to come so um so in nutrition breakfast right breakfast is it it can be sometimes difficult it can be sometimes a challenge we always want to make sure we make it a a point that our kids have a good breakfast before they leave the house but man you know they wake up they're tired they don't want to eat or i don't like this today and then the school offers well what they call breakfast if you want to go early and whatnot so do you have any good pointers for us what's a good balanced easy way to start breakfast with our kids in the morning yeah i think um there's something that our nutritionist um, says about breakfast is there should be a a breakfast triad that you need to choose um, three food groups grain fruit vegetables meats nuts and beans and dairy so uh, choose three of those make sure that you have a fiber and also uh, a source of protein uh, and so you can you can certainly uh, have that ready to go um, you know freeze things ahead of time and make your own you know for the week and then kind of put it in its own little baggies and that way have the kids involved in that and mm-hmm. make sure that they have some some say so in it and give them give them choices don't just yeah. say okay you're going to eat this for sure right kind of thing yeah it uh but you know sometimes those choices it's the wrong yeah exactly <laughs> it's the worst <laughs> we, uh, well and, and we talk about it at my house right it, i mean a choice means hey do you want this or that exactly. it, it doesn't it's not hey what do you want uh that's the that's the last question i ever i hate asking my kids right is what would you like and then it's it, it doesn't matter there's nothing that's going to pacify at that point so um y- you know it and we like we do in our house, we try to prepare some of this stuff. We try to get the kids involved. Uh, hey, you know, so this week for snacks, it's at school. Last week you had X. Do you want this this week or do you want something else? And try to help them be a part of, well, quite frankly, the, I mean, it's their life. It's what they're, they're dealing with at school. So we're trying to help them through those decisions as well. Um, pack lunch or school lunch? Um, I think it, it depends on the child. You know, I know my kids never wanted to eat lunch at school, so we always packed lunch. And I think um, if you do pack lunch, you do have a, a little bit more control over mm-hmm. um, what's going uh, into their bodies. But I think they, they need some autonomy with that, too. I think they're, again, like you're saying, you don't give them, you know, free reign on the choices, but certainly you know, having this choice or that choice and just making sure that you get that balanced uh, diet. Mm. But I think, you know, I think you could probably mix it up a little bit and let them. Pick. Yeah. You know, we went through, uh, obviously through COVID, we went through that time that, and we had uh, my kids go to Loudoun County. And so there was, I think a whole year that essentially there was you, nobody paid for school lunch. So anybody that wanted a school lunch could get a school lunch. And, and we were really amazed that it was maybe one day a week that our kids chose to have school lunch versus a pack lunch. Um, you know, I, I will just tell you, my wife and I were excited. We thought we were going to get out of making lunches for a year, but it didn't work that way. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so uh, when we talk about nutrition with kids, uh, again, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a little older, I'm, I'm in my fifties and, um, you know, a, a lot of the kind of the thought process when I was a kid was that, you know, well, they're kids just, you know, basically as long as you're getting food to them, they're going to make it all right. And, and I know that even our, in our household, we look at things a lot differently. Now we look at things of, of getting our kids good food, um, uh, making sure that, you know, their macros are are in balance so that we're not overloading them with a carb or with a you know in sugars or proteins etc i know we can my household i i use me as an example because you know everything can go awry in my house but we can sometimes get crazy with that uh making sure that we have these balanced nutritional meals planned for our kids obviously it's important to have those balance like you said pick from that those that triad but At the end of the day, what's an easy way just to make sure that I'm I'm getting my kids what they need? Yeah, and I think with kids, another thing you have to think about, too, is um, you have to look at the whole week 
versus one day Mm -hmm. um, because they're going to eat great one day and then maybe not eat so great the next day. And that's normal for for children. Mm -hmm. So I think Mm -hmm. just kind of taking a bigger picture uh, snapshot of of how they're eating because, you know, you may, you know, go to Chick-fil-A one day and and they didn't eat a great breakfast all on the same day. And, And that's okay. Right. And then you make up for it the next day. And so I think it's just the balance throughout the week. And maybe that way it takes a little stress off everybody because you're going to have some days where it's just not going to work. That's right. And well, and truly it's no different than as, as an adult, Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of try to be mindful of our health and, you know, and same thing, right. It's not, I'm not going to be perfect every day. And so, um, thank you. That's, I, I, that's from my personal uh, satisfaction, by the way, (laughs) I wanted to feel better about that. Uh, we are up to a short break time here. So if you have questions for Dr. Stephanie Schultz or myself, feel free to give us a call. Shoot us a text 865-656-8255. We will be right back here on around the house with Scott Brokamp on news dog 98, seven W O K I. Well, welcome back here on Around the House with Scott Brokamp. Uh, My guest this morning, Dr. Stephanie Schultz. She is a pediatrician, Schultz Pediatrics. And, well, it's just a delight. It's a delight to be able to be reassured as a parent that I do a few things right. Uh, Because, you know, let's face it, most parents nowadays, we all think we do it wrong all the time. Uh, Well, so... Your babies are getting ready to go back to school, and I hope you're prepared. If you're a Knox County parent, well, you got started. You're getting started this coming week. Uh, some parents like me, loud and blunt, we have already prepared and are in the swing of school. Um, so let's talk about routines, Dr. Schultz. What are some good healthy habits, some good healthy routines for well, just kind of getting going in general, mornings, days, evenings. Yeah, I think the more kids like things to be consistent, they they want to know what's going to happen. So I think talking that through, kind of putting out the schedule um, with the whole family, um, you can do you know day by day, and then maybe on the weekends even look at the week ahead. Uh, they they want structure. Mm -hmm. And so if you have the more structure, especially with school starting back, you know, bedtimes have kind of gotten a little slack. So you kind of have to get back into that routine of, you know, bath, story, bedtime sort of Mm -hmm. thing. And then maybe if you have a child who um, has a lot of, you know, trouble with decisions, maybe going ahead and making those decisions about what they're going to wear the next day, maybe the night before. And that way your morning will go a little bit easier. Um, But certainly... They like to know what's going to happen and uh, be assured that it's going to be that way uh, every day. You know, I just got to tell you, other than the first day of school, I, it seems like every time we pick outfits out the night before, by the time they wake up the next day, that is not what they want to wear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, just, it just seems to always happen that way. Um, so I want to talk about sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have always at my house, we've been proponents of our kids going to bed early. And of course, well, we go to bed early. So, uh, I wake up early, so I like to go to bed early and we have always tried to be, uh, big proponents for our kids going to bed early, even during the summertime. We still, they still have a bedtime. Our kids just don't get free reign. Um, but we're in a position now, my oldest daughter, as she plays softball, her softball practice starts at 8 p.m. And and I'm just going to tell you as a parent, I hate that. It's horrible because it's to me it's too late. I mean, she's 13, but still it you know, for at our house it's normally for her in particular 9 o'clock, it's it's wind down time. It's you're getting ready for bed, you're crawling in bed. And you can have a little bit of relaxation time, but it is time to go to sleep. And so we're I'm battling this whole softball thing. And I hear other parents talking about their kids that they're up till 9 and 10 o'clock at night. And I'm like, what is the matter with you? Um, because, you know, sleep is so vitally important. 
not just, I mean, to us as adults, but think about for our children, they're, they need longer times in terms of sleep at, at those instrumental ages. Um, then I think really most people are aware yeah. what give us, give us your, your professional input. Sure. Well, um, as far as the number of hours of sleep, uh, preschool, uh, three to five year olds need, you know, 10 to 13 hours and that's including naps, uh, pre, uh, school age kids that's six to 13, uh, need about nine to 12. And, and there's always a range there because some kids need more sleep than mm-hmm. others. So, uh, if your child's getting nine hours of sleep, but then they're tired all the time, which we get <clears throat> families come into the office quite frequently saying their kids are tired. And so that is one of the things that we talk about first is, you know, what do you do before bed? Your core body temperature has to cool down to normal before you can go to sleep. Mm. And so when you have practice until 9 o'clock at night and you come home, your core body temperature takes an hour or so to, to come back down. And so, you know, your child may have to take a cool shower to kind of bring that temperature down so they can actually go to sleep. Uh, so... Um, yeah, those late practices definitely can impact um, their ability to fall asleep for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. And they do need more sleep, and adults need more sleep than they get. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just don't like to admit it. <laughs> so. I, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I, I will, I'll have to disagree with that. My wife and I will tell you, we, we'll, we'll take all the sleep that we can get. We just don't get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We don't have the opportunity between the kids and, and life and business and, and all that goes on. Um, so I, I, I'm going to ask, and, uh, you know, we, we've we heard there's been a lot of conversation about melatonin. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm torn as, as a, uh, just in, in my core who I am. I don't, I don't like taking anything, any additional medication if I don't need to take anything. Um, but we, we hear more and more about how melatonin is a great aid to help your kids to be able to relax and get a good sleep and yet not have any ill effects. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing for sleep is the habit. I, 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 I agree with you. I think, uh, uh, you know, relying on medications to help with that and granted melatonin is not like a true medication, but it's, it's the natural hormone that our body makes to help us initiate sleep. Mm-hmm. Melatonin is not going to keep you asleep all night. Uh, it will just help with sleep initiation. And we do see in uh, adolescence uh, some trouble with sleep initiation, uh, mm-hmm. and, and that's a normal time in life for that to be a problem. And so I do think there's a place for it uh, to help with that, to help re- establish routines. But should it be something that you go to just automatically, I, I definitely think that the routines of sleep and going to bed the same time every night, even mm-hmm. on the weekend, getting up the same time every morning, having the same routine before you go to bed, that initiates your natural melatonin to be produced in your body because it's the way it's supposed to be. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I mean, quite frankly, everything that we have been talking about this whole entire hour about having good habits with your pediatrician, making sure that your kids are eating right, making sure that the uh the structure is there you know all these itty bitty little things that we may be thinking are small they all affect our sleep patterns they all affect you know i mean how again as an adult how many times have we all said you know i tried to lay down and go to bed last night and my head just wouldn't turn off well our kids are dealing with that and they're dealing with a heck of a lot more than we are because they're learning they're they're learning how to navigate life we have already, for the most part, hopefully most of us have learned how to kind of navigate through this. So the experiences they deal with on a regular basis, our children, they deal with new experiences every single day. And and we talk a lot about that at my house, about, hey, we understand these are, you know, you're learning and we, we're trying to help you learn. And, and, and being able to understand that, that so many factors go into our our sleeping habits and, and just being aware of that. So, um, you know, I'll just tell you, 
I wouldn't mind sleeping in a little bit this morning. I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, well, we are going to take a short break here on Around the House with Scott Brokamp. If you have questions, give us a call. Shoot us a text, 865-656-8255. We'll be back right here on Around the House with Scott Brokamp on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. I'm just going to tell you, if you need help sleeping at night, this tune, just put it on repeat and it will just soothe you and make you all comfort, calm, cool, collected. I have always loved this jingle. I just got to tell you. All right. So welcome back here on Around the House with Scott Brokamp. And uh, we are speaking with Dr. Stephanie Schultz of Schultz Pediatrics, and uh, man, I hope you've really been listening this morning because Dr. Schultz has really helped provide us some good information and some insight with just helping our kids be healthy, getting back to school, and maybe maybe last year was a tough year, and maybe you need to look at doing things different this year, so hopefully you've picked up some tidbits today that will help you to do that. Um, we're going to wrap up our last segment with Dr. Schultz and we're going to talk about, uh, well, I guess we'll just say it, it can, it can be a difficult subject, but the behavioral health of our children, um, you know, I'm a dad of two girls. And if you're listening, if you've got girls and you've got daughters, you know, that, um, well, sometimes it can be very difficult, uh, especially in those tween teen years, but let's just talk about the basics what if what if your kid just doesn't want to go to school well i think uh you definitely want to listen um to that i think sometimes we just want our kids to do we just want to say hey deal with it go on but i think school refusal it, there's usually something behind that so i think you need to to try to um understand where your child's coming from um, and validate their feelings um you want to make sure that um, they still go to school. Uh, I think hmm. that's very important that you don't, you know, linger and, um, you know, kind of make things last too long. I think, you know, you need to set up definitely uh, good boundaries and uh, let them know that you're you're there and you're going to be there when they get home and, uh, you know, let them know what's going what's gonna to happen throughout the day. Um, so we hear a lot about bullying nowadays um you know i mean it's something that's obviously has always gone on but i i think through obviously through science through research and through just basic time we've understand there's there's a lot of negative influences that come from that really on both sides so uh what if your what if your kid comes to you and says that they're being bullied what what should we do what's our what's our best course of action well i think you need to definitely um you know talk it through with your child it, it's definitely a, a serious issue and um you know that we have social media and lots more opportunities for kids mm. to uh to bully uh, you know kind of in a way that maybe they don't have to do it out in the open so i think uh, you definitely don't need to brush it off i think uh, you need to uh, make sure that you um, talk it through that you recognize it and then report it and then refuse to accept that this is going to continue to happen yeah that can be I, i'm yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna dive into that but it can be it can be difficult dealing with the school mm -hmm. uh in these situations i mean very difficult um so how does how does a family help with a child to be able to transition with their teachers in, in grade levels, especially when they're dealing with some behavioral issues? Well, I think um, if you have uh, children who have lots of anxiety, uh, if they're acting out, um, certainly you know going to your pediatrician for help. We actually have a, a therapist in in our office, um, uh, and she helps us a lot with with kids who have certain anxieties. I mean, they may just need to talk with somebody a few mm -hmm. times to try to figure out good ways of dealing with it. Right. Um, you know, mindfulness and uh, trying to learn ways of calming your body and understanding what your body is feeling. Uh, and then they also uh, feed off of how we're feeling. So, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that we aren't feeling anxious as well and trying to understand our feelings will help us to, to keep them calm as well. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, the, the best and worst things about being a parent is that your kids do what you do. Exactly. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, that's yeah. Uh, we could. We, I could probably do three shows on that one of what not to do. Uh, so, in in your opinion, at, at what point do is it recommended that you need to see a therapist or do some type of continuing care for your child in these situations? I think if it if it's interfering more than what you feel comfortable with, um, mm. definitely. You know, as a parent, there are certain parent things that we feel like that mm, we can sure. do, you know, try this, this, and this. And if you're getting to that point and you feel like you're not seeing any change in your child or you see that they're continuing to withdraw, continuing to not being, you know, want to be around friends, not um, being um, present with the family, that sort of thing, definitely. I, I think um, therapy can be very positive and helpful. Plus, we can help to... Um, change the way the brain thinks about things if we deal with issues earlier in life. And so you can create pathways that are more positive versus dealing with issues in a negative way. Yeah, absolutely. That, that retraining, uh, well, Dr. Schultz, thank you so much for your expertise and your time this morning. Hey, if you're looking for a pediatrician, Dr. Schultz and their team would be happy to consult with you. You can find them at SchultzPediatrics.com. That's Schultz, S-H-U-L-T-S, Pediatrics.com. Or you can reach out to them by phone at 865-670-1560. So uh, as we have customarily done here on Around the House, we have today's topic of the day. So, doctor, this one should suit you well. Today is National Twins Day. Um, it is listed at a, approximately 3% of all births in America are twins. So any, any commonalities, any problems, any things you see in births of twins and, and how, how popular do you see twins? Well, we, we actually have quite a few families with twins in our practice. And, um, I think the, the biggest thing that we see is that, um, you know, certainly we have to uh, think about two kids going through those things at the same time. And so sometimes the parents are a bit overwhelmed, and I think just uh, offering support for them. Uh, and usually, you know, if one child uh, gets sick, the other one is probably going to get it. And then you have, you know, two two sick kids at one time, mm. which sometimes can, can be really hard on parents as well. So, But we enjoy taking care of them. You know, it, they can definitely... Uh, I know we, uh, one of my coaches and, uh, they have, they have a set of twins and they're so cute. It's so funny just to see them interact and, and work together. It's, it's kind of cool. Uh, so, well, let's talk about some popular twins. Did you know that Ashton Kutcher was a twin? His twin brother, Michael was born with uh, cerebral palsy and is now a keynote speaker and an advocate for cerebral palsy community. There have been several twins who have played sports at UT. Probably a couple that you know from recent times is Ben and Zach Joyce. Um, both of them now play for the Angels, both pretty good pitchers. Elliot and Evan Berry, who both played football, um, they are brothers of Eric Berry. Reggie and uh, Raleigh McKenzie. Alana and Gabby Leach. Huh, that's interesting. Um, they are softball commitments to University of Tennessee Lady Vols softball. Uh, if you're a twin or your parents are a twin, happy Twins Day to you. That got a weird ring to it. Huh? Happy Twins Day. So, um, you, you know, there's a lot of unique things that's, that happen, and, and we like to make a, a national day for just about everything that occurs. But uh, quite frankly, if you really put that in perspective, if 3% of all births in the United States are twins, I'm just going to say that puts you in a pretty daggum unique category. Um, so enjoy that. Embrace that. Uh, you know, you always hear stories about twins where they feel they have these connections to each other. Uh, and you know what? Reach out to the twins that you know. Why don't you just tell them Happy Twins Day and and ask them. Ask them about some of the experiences that they have had of, of being twins. Uh, I know a, a few twins that I grew up with, and, well, frankly, they had uh, used their 
likeness to play tricks on others. Uh, we have all heard crazy stories about things like that as well. But, uh, you know, just because you're twins, it doesn't mean that you actually have to look alike. You don't even have to be the same sex as your twin. So the just the scientific delicacy in twins is quite unique, I think, and quite amazing. So just know this. You're, you're all amazing. Everybody listening this morning is amazing. But if you're a twin, it's a day for you to know that you're especially amazing. So thank you. Uh, we are going to take a short break. Thank you again to Dr. Schultz. Again, that's SchultzPediatrics.com. You can find them online. We are going to be right back here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. 